Catch you outside. Catch you outside. So I want to talk about this uh, Kenya Rare interview, aka Dad's baby mama. She did an interview. I forgot who she. Yeah, she did it with. Uh, she had to do a bomb first, but for some reason they chose to play this last five minutes or a part of the interview or whatever where if you're paying attention if you've been paying attention all this time then you'll know you know so I caught that so pretty much what she says because I'm not going to be too long on this pretty much what she says is like yeah you know I was at the club I was at 662 and this and this and that and then I guess something happened and I just seen security run out I might be talking about okay, so what you, so what you mean? Man? What you mean security ran out? And, and how? What does this have to do with you know? Same place, same story. Because she's totally leaving out a lot of shit that everybody else has confirmed, I guess. You know, and I don't know if nobody ever mentions her because she's dad's baby mama or that she's a non-factor or whatever but when she came in and she said she said uh uh the security just ran out i guess somebody something had happened and security ran out now she doesn't mention reggie reggie said he was there at, at 662 michael moore says reggie was there at 662 because at 662 is where Michael Moore was supposed to be heard got him alright so I don't expect Kenya or dad's baby mama to mention anything about Michael Moore I don't expect her to mention anything about that but Reggie you would have just thought it would have flowed naturally and that's what people don't understand these fucking conflicting stories and people you know adding this and taking this away and everything like that it's it's crazy because it's like you know they want us to believe like i mean they just throwing entertainment at us i'm telling you that's what they're doing they're just throwing entertainment and just, you know you get somebody to interview that's a form of entertainment you get an interview with somebody or something like that but these people that be talking and reggie right ain't nobody lying on you Ain't nobody lying on you. The only thing when I'm talking about it, the only thing I talk about is what's presented in front of me. I'm not coming out with no shit just just like off the top of my head and trying to make up some lies and shit. It's the people that you choose to interview. And the people that you choose to interview, usually their story collaborates with your story. But in this case, she didn't even mention your name. She said security ran out. She didn't say Reggie and security ran out. She didn't mention seeing Reggie or talking to Reggie or nothing like that. So, and I'm not going to say like, you know, that's not saying that Reggie wasn't there, but that's the type of shit that I'm talking about. Everybody's story should should collaborate or synchronize or add up to, uh, to that night because it was only that little part of the night where everything happened and shit. And it wasn't done here. It's not being done here and everything. And like I said, like you, sometimes these interviewers, not these interviewers, but the people that had to come on the interview, you gotta watch what they say. You gotta watch and see if these all these stories are lining up and shit like that. Because for another example, she said she ran through the crime scene. Like what? She said, "Boom! I bolted through the crime scene with the truck and shit, yellow tape and all." Then nobody mention that. Why doesn't anybody talk about that? Because ain't nobody else said they did it. Nobody else said they did it. Now, they might come later and say it now. But out of all the years and everything that we didn't got with interviews and people saying that, and they had chances to say that, especially the people who were at the crime scene. I mean, not even the police. You know, there. I don't know how many were on there, but ain't no police who was supposedly on the crime scene said anything about some SUV covered through coming through the uh the yellow tape and shit like that the outlaws never said anything about uh what you call it coming through the tape suge never said nothing about her com- coming through the tape uh, um, frank alexander never said anything about somebody running through the yellow tape with a uh with a, with an suv or whatever and never say no shit like that because if they did then i wouldn't be making this video so all I'm doing is I'm just saying like you gotta watch these you gotta watch what these people be saying in these interviews so you can catch the shit 
Because, you know, some of this shit, a lot of these motherfuckers, it just flies over their head. They already believe what they want to believe any fucking way. So it's like, all they going to do is just, you know, come at people like me and shit and, and try to uh, uh, try to rationalize some bullshit or try to have some um, some type of rebuttal, which they, they probably think is intelligent or some shit. But just like they pretty much are just proving my point. You know what I'm saying? So, and I know like now, all these interviews... <laughs> That, uh, that Reggie, these future interviews or whatever, he gonna watch closely who he get on there because it's like the closer they are to Reggie and the more he cool with him, he can talk to him and everything like that. And the more that, you know, they're more in agreement with him, he's gonna interview them. Reggie is starting to get selective when it comes to interviews now. He's not gonna interview everybody because first of all, everybody don't want to talk to his ass. And I want to know that too. Like why? I thought you you supposed to be cool, Reggie. Why you know why is it some people who don't want to fuck with you? It got to be something serious. I mean, either that or you just a bad person and they just don't like you as a person. But I mean, he's being selective with his interviews now. You know, and he's probably going to get tighter on that because, like I said, if you don't agree with Reggie Wright Jr., then pretty much he thinks you're an idiot and you're crazy and you're stupid and. And all of his little minions and everybody like that with they fake pages and shit for to come right behind and, and do the same shit so he ain't got to do the work, you know. But like I said, you know, <laughs> that was just funny to me. It was like, damn, okay. Like, she's telling a, a, a extend, extended part of the story or some shit. Because like I said, it's, it's always some shit where it's like these people who were there and who were not there who claimed they were there and all this other shit it's like what did these motherfuckers have to really lie about though you know because she like she said yo yo oh yo yo wasn't at the hospital hey, bitch, who the, like oh okay okay so now yo yo's lying now yo yo is you know and these people like well we don't know if yo yo was there or not but then everything everybody else says y'all believe that don't make no sense if you can't believe one thing, you can't believe everything. You can't just keep, just like I said, these picking sides and shit. And these are like notable people. This female don't know Tupac. These motherfuckers just be around motherfuckers and shit and, and, and just come. You know, as Yo Yo, I mean, he used to fuck with Yo Yo. So why the fuck would Yo Yo lie about her being there? Fuck what everybody else was talking about right now. But she mentioned, oh, Yo Yo was there. I ain't see her or some shit like that. But you telling the truth though. So Yo Yo is lying and you telling the truth. Nah. You know, so like I said, the, you know, Reggie is just gonna probably continue to interview people to his likeness. You know, versus the people who he have to probably beg to get on the phone because people want to hear from from them or whatever. But everybody's not gonna do an interview because you know Reggie is going to either you know you know when shit start getting real Reggie want to get off the phone you know it's better that Reggie agrees with what you're saying in the interview if you notice a lot of these people who are the interview and they start getting into talking into some you know some real crucial deep thinking type of shit where it's like okay like we got this motherfucker on the phone let him talk no Reggie want to get him off the phone because the better he agrees with you, the better the interview is going to be. If you start going left and start talking shit about Reggie and start talking about bad, I don't know what the fuck happened. I know some shit was going on or something like that that does not collaborate with what he's talking about or doesn't synchronize with what he's already told and what everybody else is told and shit like that. Come on now. Everybody likes to bring up, you know, Craig, uh, Greg Katie and everything. You know, Greg Kading and and Reggie Wright are, are police officers, are former police officers. So, of course, they're going to be cool. Of course, they're going to get interviews with that. That's another fellow officer helping another fellow officer, regardless of their retirement. They they were sworn in. They took that oath. And all this Keefe D shit and all the other bullshit. Man, get the fuck out of here. That shit was, was rehearsed and shit like that. It's just it's, Come on now. But y'all, y'all check it out in case they take it down, cause you know how they is. Like, especially if I if I find out some shit and people start watching it or something, they start taking interviews down. Like they took down that that they took down that Mob James and and um and Whack One Hundred interview. Why? For what? Why did they take it down? It was it was an interview. It was a motherfucker 
speaking. Everybody was speaking how they wanted to speak. It, every, it was real. It was natural. It was organic. That's the type of interviews that we want to hear because somebody going to say something. Somebody going to say something that doesn't line up with what's been said. But what happens when they do it? I mean, they ain't going to cut the interview off in the middle of the interview. They going to put the shit up, process it, probably listen to it and shit. Be like, oh shit. See the comments and shit like that and take it down. Niggas is removing videos now. It's like, what the fuck are y'all scared of? What you, what this? Y'all ain't had no bad interviews. I mean, y'all had some boring interviews, but y'all ain't had no bad interviews. You know, so but I, I, I'm, I'm pretty much speaking to Reggie Wright with that. It's like, come on, dude. It's like you're you going you gonna to fool a lot of people. Like I said, Reggie, you had, you had something to do with something. Something you had something to do. You wasn't just out there and just oblivious to everything. Like I said, he wanted to play... He want to play dumb all the time and everything like that. That's why he took the interview down. Because I'm like, yeah, this motherfucker is playing dumb. Black 100 called him out on his ass playing dumb all the fucking time. Checked his ass. What he do, he gets scared to take the shit down. Probably won't hear from Wack in a while. Because Wack going to say some shit that he want to say. You know, Wack speak from his heart. He'll give a fuck what you think. <laughs> I can respect a man like that. Like I said, I might not agree with everything that the motherfucker saying. But if this motherfucker is talking real shit and everything like that, then, I mean, what you gonna hate on them for? Like I said, the only reason I'm making I'm making this video is because this is based off what I heard. It's just my reaction to it. I'm not getting on here and making up shit. These people are saying this shit. All these people who were so-called around and, and involved in death row, who was there that night in Vegas or whatever, or to, before the shooting, a day before the shooting, I didn't probably heard of all of them. All of them. I didn't probably heard all the interviews. Any anybody that has been that has been interviewed that has something to do with Tupac, I probably didn't already heard it. That's how that's how uh uh how nimble I I am on my game and shit when it comes to this shit. You know, I just do my this is like my independent studies. That's what I like to do. I like to do that shit in my spare time and study and shit and enlighten myself on things and everything. I have to get up on here and be lying on people and be talking shit about people and all that other bullshit. No, I only do that shit when I have to defend myself. I mean, like I said, I'm a grown ass man. I don't give a fuck who you are or what level of position or if you're in a in, in a in, in a government or anything like that. Like, hey, I'm we still all human beings. We bleed the, we bleed the same. And I'm not gonna let nobody just sit there and just talk shit and just act like I'm gonna just be like, okay, yeah, whatever. No, I'm gonna say what I gotta say. And if you got something else, you got another rebuttal to come with, then we'll keep it going until somebody back down. And it ain't gonna be me. I'm not gonna be the one that's gonna back down. That's I never been that way. If if I come up on some shit where it's like, okay, well, I, I didn't know that. Or if there's some if, if I'm misinformed or some shit, yeah, I'll admit it. I'll be a man about it and admit it. I'm not gonna back down to you just because you think you got a, a, a following or people on your nuts and shit and, and, and you motherfuckers talk about oh you got this many subscribers. It's like get the fuck out of here. Get the all the way the fuck out of here. Don't nobody give a fuck about that shit at the end of the day because it means nothing because I don't know none of them motherfuckers. Even though like I said I, I respect the people that subscribe to me. I do. But I, I don't know them. So, I mean, what, what gain am I getting in life? What gain am I getting in life by bragging about views and subscribers? No, nah, you got to be lacking. In, you got to be lacking in a whole lot of other shit to be worried about that. If that's on your fucking agenda when you get up and, and you got to check your views and likes and shit like that. And that's your number one thing. Yeah, you lacking something. You lacking something real hard. Who knows what it is? You know, it ain't none of my business. But anyway, if they don't take that interview down, y'all listen to it. Just just see what I'm saying. Like just match it up to what you didn't already heard. Match the interview up to what you didn't heard already. And then listen to what she said. Listen listen to her say that she was at 662 that night, but she don't mention nothing about seeing Reggie. She don't mention going up to him and talking to him, saying hi, or even glancing at him or nothing like that. She said, when, well, I guess when Tupac got shot, security ran out. 
She didn't say, "Hey, yeah, yeah, I, I remember seeing, I remember seeing Reggie and 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 and, and his security personnel run out." Reggie, Reggie wanted to say, "Oh, because when I heard the shots, I left." Ex exactly, A fucking Sherlock. That's what she just said, but she didn't say that she saw you. <laughs> she didn't say she saw you. She said she saw security. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. That's what the type of shit I be talking about. That's the type of shit that I look for because the whole story is Reggie was there anyway, right? Reggie was there. I don't even we don't even know if that nigga was there or not. We don't know who to fucking believe. All we know is like at the end of the day, Reggie still came up with a story for everybody to tell Shook. Just like he gave his story to tell to his personal people and everything, he's still at the end of the day. Gave somebody a story to tell Shook. So, come on. Y'all putting it out here. Y'all the ones that's putting it out here. Stop putting it out here. You putting that information out there and shit. Like I said, that's what, the, that's what the lady That's what the lady said. The lady said I was at 662. I guess shots had rang out or something like that. And then security was gone. She didn't say nothing about being with Reggie Wright that night or seeing him or talking to him or anything like that. I don't give a fuck how many people was at, it was at, was at the club and shit like that. You wasn't standing in one spot or nothing like that. Then secondly, then the second thing. Pay attention to when she say, I went through the yellow tape. Nobody has ever said that. Nobody ever said there was a woman. Even if they didn't know it. It was just an unidentified car that just came through the tape. Came through the crime scene and shit. Nobody says that. And that's pretty much self-explanatory. Because if you've heard all the interviews, ain't nobody ever mentioned that shit. Nobody ever mentioned dad's baby mama, period. You know what I'm saying? But Reggie's running out of people to interview. He's running out of people to interview. And the people, the final people that he does interview are going to be more to his likeness. He's not going to get anybody who's biased. And that's what people don't understand when it comes to Reggie Ray. He's he's trying to make it seem like, oh, you know, I'm just trying to clear my name and everything like that. But you're still picking and choosing who you want to interview. There's probably people who want to talk and who want to interview. And he probably don't do it. And he probably don't want to do it. Because they might get up on the phone and say something. Because he always claims, hey, when these interviews are done, I don't do no pre-screening. But it's like, nigga, why are you always mentioning why you're not doing pre-screening? If you ain't doing pre-screening, we heard it the first time. We heard it the first time. Yeah, there might be some new people, but I highly doubt that. Everybody who's in these communities are in. They're already picking sides and shit. But he do these interviews and he, and, and he, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't, um, I don't pre-screen these interviews. This is all raw. Bullshit. You be telling them what to talk about. You be telling them, you know, don't be bringing up you no know, personal shit or nothing like that. Let's just, you know, uh, stick to the subject. Pretty much what Reggie want to talk about. And everybody's, you know, his set up questions. What's your favorite memory of Tupac? And, and, and all this other, you know, pillow talk shit and everything. No. Nah. It didn't already happen. There's been plenty of plenty of interviews, and like I said, Mob James and uh, d -d 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 Mob James and Wack 100. There's a couple other people who are them, them interviews didn't go the way Reggie planned them. He didn't go the way he planned. He was like, "Oh shit!" And some of them he took down. He probably took down all of them, all of the fucking interviews that didn't go as, go as planned as Reggie thought they would. They probably removed them, had John removed them videos and shit like that. So y'all can't hear, y'all can't listen. Just like I said, just like the goddamn uh, <laughs> Mob James and Wack 100 interview. They put, he put them on the phone and then all of a sudden then he didn't like how it turned out. So now the interview is off. So y'all go ahead and watch that interview before they take it down. And I'm just saying, like you can, you can, you can disagree with me or whatever. But like I said, nobody mentions her. She mentions everything. She mentions all this other shit. The hospital. She mentions. She mentions everything that everybody else on the other side mentions when they mention that night or they mention about at the hospital. Nobody ever mentions her. Either she was too too small or in, in, insignificant to notice or whatever. But a lot of these people just like they're telling the stories like they were right there. They were around Pac and everything. They were friends with, with with everybody and Suge, and they were real close there. Everybody had this little tight knit circle, nice and tight and everything. But can't nobody get their fucking story correct. 
nobody's story is lining up. From 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 what was said and what happened at the club, who they saw at the club, to 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 the to the aftermath or whatever, and, and, and on the crime scene, motherfuckers busting through the crime scene all the way to the hospital. So yo 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 yo's lying, Eric B is lying, all these motherfuckers who like what the fuck they got to lie about? Nigga, you, you motherfuckers is death row. Tupac wasn't death row. He just worked for Death Row. He wasn't Death Row. Death Row was a lifestyle with the motherfuckers. Death Row, that's that was the 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 the, the southern part of California, L.A. County, Compton, Long Beach. That right there, Inglewood, all that shit, all that's Death Row. That was a lifestyle. Pac was not Death Row. He just worked for the motherfuckers and shit. So like I said, you got these motherfuckers saying, "Oh yeah, well that." So I'm lying. I'm lying. But so, so they're lying. See, this is the shit I be talking about. This is why we're still talking about it 25, 25 years later. Because the shit just don't add up. That's that's what people don't get. This is why we we keep talking about it. Y'all, the other people are already convinced. Leave it be then. Y'all already convinced. But the people who are asking questions don't try to try to you know uh, put a lock on your shit and then want to sneak away and, and 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 start talking shit to us because you know we don't agree with you talking about because you didn't already fucking just made up your mind you've already made up your mind this happened that happened they said this happened these people confirmed this and everything like that case still open all types of shit oh everybody did okay yeah everybody's dead. Everybody ain't dead. Everybody ain't dead. It's only been 25 years. Everybody ain't dead. As you can see, this motherfucker's still walking around. Because niggas are still doing interviews and shit. But y'all watch that interview. It's only like five minutes. Check it out. 